In this lesson, we are going to be solving one-step equations with integers. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So when we're talking about one-step equations with integers, we're looking at something like negative 6x equals 18, or x minus 7 equals 15. And remember, when we are solving equations, our goal is to find the value for the variable that makes the equation true. So in order to do that, we want to isolate the variable, which just means to get the variable all by itself by using something we call inverse operations. And an inverse operation is like when we are using addition. It's how we would undo addition. And so in that example, the inverse of addition is subtraction. But if the equation was using division, then we would use multiplication in order to undo division. And the last thing we want to remember when we're solving these one-step equations is that we want to keep the equation balanced. I like to say what you do to one side of the equation, you're going to do to the other. So let's see how this looks. In my first example, I have x plus 3 equals 18. So I can see that in the equation, the operation that is happening to x is we are adding 3. So in order to do the inverse or to undo that, we are going to subtract 3. Remember we want to do that on both sides to keep our equation balanced. And I can see that the positive 3 and the negative 3 are going to cancel. They're going to result in 0. So I can write it as x equals 15. I can also check my work by taking my value of x and substituting it back into the original equation. So that would look like 15 plus 3 equals 18. I can add 15 and 3 to get 18, and I know that that's a true statement. And remember, that's what we said the goal was. Go ahead and pause the video and try the next one on your own. So let's see how you did. We have x minus 63 equals 11. So we have subtraction that is taking place in the equation, and we're going to do the inverse of that, which is to add 63 to both sides. This cancels, so I can see that I have x left over, and I have 74 on the right side of my equation. I'm going to check my work by plugging 74 back in to my equation. Oops. And I have 74 minus 63 equals 11. So when I do the math, I can see that 11 is equal to 11, and so I know that I have a true statement. Let's go ahead and look at a few different ones. In this example, we can read this as negative 12g equals 84. Now this one's a little trickier because we're not actually um, saying out loud what the operation is, but we know that between the negative 12 and the g is a hidden multiplication sign. So this is actually negative 12 times g. Now in order to do the inverse of multiplication, I'm going to have to divide by negative 12. I'm going to do that to both sides. And I can see negative 12 divided by negative 12 is going to result in 1, or just 1g, equals negative 7. Go ahead and pause and try the next one. Now this one was a little bit different. It says h divided by 8 equals negative 8. And remember, even though it looks like a fraction, a fraction is another way to represent division. So the inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by the 8. I'm going to do that on both sides of my equation to keep it balanced. And I'll get that h equals negative 64. Now these look a little bit different if you look at the equation because the variable is actually on the right side of the equation. But everything still works the same because we know that an equation has two equal expressions. And so because we know this is equal, we can just solve using the same process, but we're just going to focus on the side of the equation where the variable is. So I have 14 equals r divided by 7. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 7, and I will have that negative 98 equals r. Go ahead and pause the video and do the next one on your own. 
Okay, so we have 2 equals negative 14 plus x. I want to isolate x by itself, so I'm going to have to move the negative 14. I'm going to do the opposite of negative 14, which is to add 14 to both sides. And I'll have that 16 is equal to x. And you don't have to do this, but I like to rewrite these where the x is on the left. This will become more helpful when we get to inequalities. Okay, let's look at the next one. Now we can see how word problems apply to real world situations. This question says, according to CBS, in the year 2000, the average cost of a World Series ticket was $450. This is $180 more than the cost of a 2007 ticket. How much was a ticket in 2007? So I like to think about what information is the question giving me? Well, first of all, we know that the question tells us, well, the question is asking how much a ticket was in 2007. So I want to know the cost of a ticket. And we don't know that, so we're going to use X to represent that. It also tells me that there was a ticket in 2000, and that cost was $450. Now the, the tricky statement is right here. It says this is $180 more than the cost of a 2007 ticket. Okay, so let's think about what that means. So I like to think, okay, is this the ticket in 2000 more expensive or is the 2007 ticket more expensive? And when I read that, I can see that it's explaining that this being the 2000 ticket is $180 more than the cost of the 2007 ticket. So I can see that the 2000 ticket is actually the more expensive thing. And that is what we are going to set our equation equal to. I like to draw this little picture when I'm solving, when I'm setting up equations that um, it's called a bar model and it works for really any equation, but especially these um, initial one step equations are really handy. So I have figured out so far that everything is going to be equal to the $450 ticket, but I also know there's this ticket that's two, in the 2007 ticket. I don't know how much that costs, and I also know that this $450 represents $180 more than this ticket. So once I put it in my bar model, I can set up my equation really easy. X equals, oh, excuse me, not x equals, x plus 180 is going to be equal to 450. And from there I can solve by using inverse operations to isolate my variable and I'll see that x is equal to 270. And then I want to go back to my, my problem and give it a label, $270. Now I like to go back and think if it makes sense. Okay, well, if the, if the 2007 ticket is $270, does it make sense? Yes, because it's still, still less expensive than the 2007 ticket. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. I want you to try this one on your own, and then I'll talk you through it. Isaac started the week with $78 in his bank account. After depositing a paycheck, the balance was $298. What is the amount of Isaac's paycheck? So again, we're just going to make a few notes. So we know he started the week. $78, and then he deposited a paycheck, so he got paid, and the balance was $298. So we could say the end of the week, $298. What was the amount of Isaac's paycheck? Well, great, we don't know, so we're going to use the variable x to represent his paycheck. So again, I like to draw my little picture, my model, and I know that the at the end of the week, or our balance, what we're trying to get to is 298. And that there are two things that are happening here. We are actually starting with $78, and then we're getting paid. And our job is to find out what that paycheck is. So now I can set up my equation, 78 plus x equals 298. And I want to isolate my variable. I'm going to move that 78. There's not a sign in front of it. But we know that that's a positive, so we know that we're going to subtract in order to invert or in order to balance our equation. 
and I'm going to end up with 220. And when I go back to my problem, I can see that I, that's $220. And that does make sense. If, I, if Isaac has $78 and we put 220 in his bank account, then it would make sense that he gets $298 in his, as his balance. Great job, guys. You solved one step equations with integers. Feel free to go back and rewatch any of the video to help you if you have any more questions. If you need some extra practice, I'm going to show you five different problems on the next slide that you can pause and try on your own. Great job, everyone.